depictions of mind control in popular culture have actually been wide and varied. From the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, to the tales of Svengali, and the book and films of the Manchurian Candidate, the theme of robotically controlled assassins and hypnotically controlled slaves is in fact a common plot point. Even comedies such as The Naked Gun and Zoolander use this theme of assassins who do not know they are assassins. One could even argue that the Pied Piper employed mind manipulation techniques in order to steal away the children of his clients. We are also shown in many films and media presentations the concept of multiple personalities in characters. This plot device has in fact become old hat now in Hollywood through overuse. The audience is no longer shocked to find that the main protagonist is in actuality themselves, the suspect they are looking for, unknown to their true personality. A separate person has manifest within the mind of the protagonist, completely detached in actions and memory to the original core personality. This schism is usually shown as the result of some event or trauma so powerful as to literally shatter the mind of the protagonist into distinct personalities. This plot point is perhaps more accurate than most people realize. This manipulation of the mind is actually far from science fiction and has been well documented in primary sources, such as declassified documents, court hearings, exposes in the media by those involved boasting at their prowess, and by insider whistleblowers. The subject has also been discussed by many researchers in a secondary sense. Notable inclusions are the fantastic and detailed work of Jim Keith and Dr. Colin Ross. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Many of the books in the public eye are littered with disinformation, usually suggesting there is little actual success in the field of mind manipulation. I will draw together the evidence to show the scope of these projects and prove that mind control, in all its forms, was and is used to control us on numerous levels. What exactly do we mean by mind control? We are talking about the ability to control a person's thoughts and actions in order to have them do the bidding of their programmers against their own will and in some cases, against their own moral code. In this realm, we are speaking of robotically controlled individuals, slaves to the whims of their masters. This can not only apply to the individual in programming of personal thought and action, but can also be utilized in the arena of mass manipulation or mass programming, affecting large sections of the public. This can run the gamut from advertising techniques that manipulate our subconscious without our knowledge, to lies by the media and full military propaganda, designed to shape the ideology of a nation. Indeed, the application of individual mind control experiments would instantly fail were it not for the mass manipulation techniques that tell the public, this sort of technique is not possible, it is in the arena of science fiction or espionage thrillers. What I intend to prove is that this is far from science fiction. The fact that US, UK, Chinese and Russian governments were involved in varying levels of individual and mass mind control programs is not even denied, rather it is often passed over with the explanation that it was a different time. The Cold War made us paranoid and justified our actions, and of course the classic, we never achieved our goals in any meaningful sense anyway. In fact we can even see the propaganda posters from Nazi Germany or Communist Russia and in our wise Western way, decode them for the manipulation they are, without applying that same critical analysis to the images we ourselves are presented with every day. We seem to forget that the aim of propaganda is to disguise itself as fact. The U.S. mind control program started in April 1950, with the beginning of the fabled Project Bluebird. The official reason for any U.S. involvement with the dark arts of mind control is that it was a response to communist methods used against American GIs in the Korean War, fearing that Americans were being brainwashed into confessing and defecting to the communist regime. However, as the start of this program predates the cited conflict, we can see clearly that this explanation too is manipulative propaganda directed against the public to manage their perceptions of the world. 
Project Chowder was a United States Navy program beginning in the autumn of 1947 primarily involved in the testing of different drugs in interrogation scenarios and collecting results on their usefulness. The program was led by Dr. Charles Savage of the Naval Medical Research Institute, Bethesda, Maryland, and ran from 1947 to 1953. The doctors involved used both natural and synthetic concoctions on their test subjects in order to achieve their required results. Project Chatter involved experimentation on animals and humans alike, with large doses of scopolamine, mescaline, and various other potions and narcotics used in interrogation scenarios. This project also predated the Korean War. Project Artichoke was the continuation of Bluebird, officially beginning on 20 August 1951, and run by the CIA's Office of Scientific Intelligence. The desired results of the project were charted in a memo, dated January 1952, that stated, can we get control of an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will, and even against fundamental laws of nature, such as self-preservation. The project studied hypnosis, forced morphine and heroin addiction, followed by subsequent forced withdrawal and the use of various other chemicals, among other methods, in order to produce amnesia and other vulnerable states in subjects, ostensibly for interrogation purposes. A CIA document, dated 26 April 1952, stated that those employed in artichoke interrogations used heroin on a routine basis, as this can be useful in reverse because of the stresses produced when they are withdrawn from those who are addicted to their use. Bluebird and Artichoke were rolled into the umbrella term MKUltra in 1953. When talking about mind control projects, the term MKUltra is often used to refer to mind control experiments in general as its brief was so varied. MKUltra had at least 149 sub-projects that we know of. In 1963, MKUltra was renamed MK Search, which ran until the early 1970s, when all pertinent documentation was destroyed at the behest of the CIA and the projects then officially disbanded, although more likely were reclassified. Other projects that emerged from the U.S. administration were MK Naomi, MK Delta and Kiltop. Though different delineations had slightly different aims and objectives, we can view all these projects as a continuation of the broader heading of mind control experimentation. MK Naomi reportedly focused on biological projects including biological warfare agents specifically, to store materials that could either incapacitate or kill a test subject, and to develop devices for the diffusion of such materials. This is essentially flowery language for individual and mass drugging. A 1967 CIA memo uncovered by the Church Committee, an investigation into clandestine government experimentation, conducted in 1975, showed evidence of at least three covert techniques for attacking and poisoning crops that had been examined under field conditions, meaning they were tested in real-world scenarios. On 25 November 1969, President Richard Nixon officially abolished any military practice involving biological weapons, and Project MK Naomi was dissolved. On 14 February 1970, a presidential order was invoked to outlaw all stockpiles of bacteriological weapons and non-living toxins. This, however, did not deter U.S. scientists from stockpiling huge amounts of lethal shellfish poisons in Fort Detrick until the mid-1970s. The center of mind control in the U.K. appears to be a charitable organization named Tavistock, the Tavistock Clinic began during the First World War, treating returning soldiers suffering from shell shock as a result of their horrific experiences. The clinic itself sprang up out of Wellington House, the British military propaganda agency responsible for weaning public opinion round to an acceptance of war with Germany. The studies on the effects of trauma and the breaking point of humans proved seemingly invaluable as the clinic morphed into the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations and began to focus on organizing and directing social orders through social psychological manipulation. Tavistock, employing its psychological methods, is used by corporations, citizens, and countries to define the norms and train business leaders and gently coerce society into the direction that is best for it in their considered authoritarian opinion. 
By understanding and utilizing the effects of trauma, they can reduce the critical analysis of individuals or a nation, terrifying them to run into the arms of their authoritarian saviors, namely the state, at any given problem that threatens them. Avistok practitioners discovered the most effective way to ensure devotion to the leaders was to provide a solution to the terrible problems faced by the people. These manufactured external events shake the core of the populace, which look to authority to save them and provide a solution. Acting like a consoling father figure, the solutions required by the public can be suggested by the authorities, and likely, regardless of the action, if it solves the immediate problem, the public will not only accept this, but clamor for the change. This is how nations and national identities are formed. I believe mind control in all its forms to still be an active concern of all military industrialized countries' intelligence agencies. I believe that there are projects for individual countries and their respective secret service agencies, but also collusion and sharing of experimental results, techniques and methodology, at the very top level of military and government, or more accurately, shadow government. US and UK collusion in the ultimate goal of mind control is proven by the association of certain doctors within the field and an overlapping of sponsorship and related parties, but strangely, Nazi and communist agencies also appear to show an increasingly open level of communication and similarity of techniques. Mind control. Psychological reality or mindless rhetoric. Mind control is the process by which individual or collective freedom of choice and action is compromised by agents or agencies that modify or distort perception, motivation, affect, cognition and or behavioral outcomes. It is neither magical nor mystical, but a process that involves a set of basic social psychological principles. Informity, compliance, persuasion, dissonance, reactance, guilt, and fear arousal, modeling and identification, are some of the staple social influence ingredients well studied in psychological experiments and field studies. In some combinations, they create a powerful crucible of extreme mental and behavioral manipulation when synthesized with several other real-world factors, such as charismatic, authoritarian leaders, dominant ideologies, social isolation, physical debilitation, induced phobias, and extreme threats or promised rewards that are typically deceptively orchestrated over an extended time period in settings where they are applied intensively. Has also been reported that the CIA put into practice nearly 150 projects, collectively termed MKUltra, to develop various forms of exotic mind control, including the use of LSD and hypnosis.